What's going on guys, it's Cooper Codes. In this video, we're gonna be building this code text editor in React. We're gonna be able to switch between two different files, so a Python file, then an HTML file, and then we're also gonna be able to get the current value of whatever the file is. This video is super helpful for if you want to build a coding interview platform or a technical blog with code inputs. And the text editor we're using in this video is called Monaco. It is the exact same text editor that VS Code uses. So you can provide your users with an experience they're already familiar with. Let's get into it. So I'm gonna get started by creating a Vite project by saying npm create Vite at latest then the name of your project, which I'm going to say app, then a dash dash, and then we have to say the template of what we want to use. So we can say dash dash template is React. So we're creating a React project with Vite. So now we can go into your app directory and then npm install all the basic packages. We also need to install another package, which is going to be our Monaco editor. So I'm gonna say npm install at Monaco dash editor slash React. So let's open up our app directory here and we can go into the source folder and go into app.jsx. This is our basic just boilerplate React app. So I'm gonna delete everything here. Before we get started with messing with our app file, I'm gonna go into the app.css and pretty much just delete everything here. Beat has a lot of like strange styling by default. So we can just change the styling to just be body is gonna have a padding of zero and a margin of zero, which is gonna help us get that effect of the full like IDE type screen that I showed earlier. And in index.css, we can just say control A and get rid of all this. So we just want the regular boilerplate stylings. With styling out of the way, we can go up here and just import the editor from at Monaco editor slash react. An important thing to understand about the Monaco editor is that it will take up the full width and height of its container if you let it, or if you tell it to be width 100% and height 100%. This is important to know because it allows us to have editors of any size. So whether that's the full screen, like I'm gonna show in this video, or just, you know, an embed type size, whatever you need, you can make it that size. And so now we can initialize the editor by saying editor like this, and it is an element passed to us from up here. And we can define some properties. For example, the height is going to be equal to 100 view height, and its width is going to be equal to 100%. You might be thinking, why is the height 100 view height and not 100%? This is because we don't have a defined height for this outer div. And so we have to make the actual editor have real height instead of just 100%. But the width of this outer div is defined to already be 100%. So we can just take up that width that already exists. So let's keep going here. We have access to the theming by setting the theme equal to, for example, VS dash dark. So the VS code dark mode. And we can also set a default language. I'm just gonna say Python. Let's npm run dev to see what things look like. So we can say npm run dev in our console to start up our web page. Go to the link here. And we can now see that the code editor is fully implemented. So we can say print hello world. This isn't a Python tutorial, but you know, that's just some basic Python. And so there we go. Pretty cool. And so if your use case just requires a simple embed, you could even do something where you guys don't have to do this, but just for the sake of example, the height is 400 pixels and the width is 300 pixels. I'm actually gonna change this around a bit. So this looks a bit better. And now we have a more simple editor that we can use in something like a tutorial blog or something along those lines. But for this tutorial, I'm gonna stick to that 100% and 100 view height. I'm just showing you guys how you can have it in different sizes. And so on top of this generic editor, I'm gonna do two different things. The first thing we're gonna do is be able to change from one file to the next, because you guys might wanna do that, and also get the value of the Monaco editor. When we want to change from one file to the next, you have to think about this kind of systematically. Every single file is gonna have three different things, a file path or a name in our case, a language for what the file is, and also a default value if you guys want to do that. And so down here, our path is gonna be equal to the file name. So I'm just going to put in boy, like, you know, boilerplate values for now. And the default language is going to be equal to, well, that can still just be Python. And then the default value can be equal to a file value, but I'm just going to say here is some Python text. And so we can make a JavaScript object that represents different files we want the user to interact with. So let's scroll up and say, const files is equal to an object. And so if we had something like, you know, script.py, we could then set that equal to a bunch of these properties, 
like these ones down here, that we want our Python script to be set to. So you can literally copy these over, although this different syntax. The name is going to be equal to the file name here. The language is going to be equal to the language there. And the value is going to be equal to, you know, whatever we want the starting value to be. So this name should probably be script.py. Language is Python. And then here is some Python text. And so we can actually make a state down here and we can get rid of this count state here. So instead, I'm just going to say file name and set file name, because what's going to happen is we are going to change this state and it's initially going to be equal to script.py. And what we can do is we can say, OK, you see the files object that we have at line six here. We can say files of script.py is what our editor should currently be showing. And so when we ask the editor to show files of script.py, it can show all those different properties of the name, language, and the value, and then pass those to the editor. And so we can take this comment and pretty much implement it into our code. And to simplify our code, I'm going to say that the const file, so the current file we're on, is equal to the files object of the file name. And so to add on to this comment, this is technically going to then become just file is going to show us all this information like this. And so now we can get all this information and bring it down here. So for example, the path is going to point to the file dot name, the default language is going to be the file dot language, and then we can get the file dot value. And so now if we go to our editor, we should see our Python default value here. Amazing. So now the editor is referencing this file that we passed in. And so if we also wanted to have an HTML file, we could scroll up here and add in an index.html. And so we can copy all these values above. And instead, the name is going to be index.html. The language is going to be HTML. And I'm just going to make it be like a div or something simple. And so now here's where things get interesting. We can make a button that sets the state here. So instead of being script.py, it can change to index.html when the person clicks a button. So let's go down here and add some very basic buttons. The first button is going to say switch to index.html. And the second button is going to say switch to script.py. And so just doing a very basic just on click syntax, we can say when the user clicks this button, we want it to point to a functionality of saying set the file name equal to index.html. Similarly, down here, we're going to say instead of HTML, we switch it to script.py. And so the user is going to click this button. This new file name state is going to get set and our application is going to re-render showing the new file. Amazing stuff. So here we go. We are now able to switch between two different files. And you'll see, we can even type here, switch over to script.py, and we can also come back and you see it will save that state. And that's something that Monaco does. And so let's say you're building a platform that requires the user to switch back and forth between two different files you'll see it's going to save whatever the user previously typed. So now we get to an important part of the video, which is how do we get the value of our editor? We can get the value of our editor by creating a reference to the editor when it gets mounted. To start with creating a reference, we can scroll to the top and use the use ref hook in React. So I'm going to say const editor ref is equal to the use ref of null initially. This allows us to save a reference to the editor when it gets fully loaded. And so we can make a pretty simple function here by saying function handle editor did mount where Monaco is passing us the editor and also an instance of Monaco, although we're not going to use that in this video. We can set the editor ref dot current. So the reference is current value equal to the editor that is down here. And so if we ever need access to the Monaco editor, anywhere else in our react code, we can grab it by saying editor ref current. Let's say we wanted to use a basic function to get the editor value by saying function get editor value, we can get the editor value by saying editor ref dot current dot get value. And we can just alert this to the user is a basic way to show it. And this function at line 34 handling the editor mount doesn't run by itself. So we need to go down to the editor. And when the on mount event gets hit, we want it to then run the handle editor did mount code. And so now that this is running when our website gets loaded, we can finally make that button that is going to get editor value. And so when they click this, we want to say get editor value, which is the function we made at line 38. All right, let's save this and go to our website. You'll see that when you press the get editor value, 
it's going to show us here is some Python text. We can switch to index.html and then it's going to show us the HTML text. I'm just gonna paste this in for an example, but if we have a more complicated example here, we can say get editor value and it's still going to show us all those different lines and it will also keep track of the indentation. Let's say you're making a coding interview platform one thing you could do is instead of just alerting the editor value, you could send the value of the user's code over to your own server to validate it. All right, thanks so much for watching and hopefully this video got you started with creating a code editor in React.